Good evening and welcome back to another episode of Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishment and uh, we are currently on case four and the uh, Abbey Grain uh, sorry <laughs> the Abbey Grange affair I was right um, so anyway um, in the just quick recap in the previous episode we more or less just um, inspected the body, uh, inspected the actual crime scene. We got Toby just there uh, to actually do a bit of sniffing for some clues. And um, we've now arrived back in Baker Street for the next part. So we're looking for 1893, I believe. The Rock of Gibraltar's arrival, so that should be it. So, um, brought to England Miss Mary Fraser, the heiress of the Fraser family owning land and tin mines in Australia. This reportedly beautiful young lady is presently engaged to Sir Eustace Bagginstall, one of the wealthiest gentlemen in Kent. Um, so the name of the ship um, Actually, give the name of the ship. Oh, the Rock of Gibraltar, a bulk carrier from. Okay, so it's actually the name of the ship. Um, okay, so. Okay, so now we've Here established it is. that. The shipping begin. company, the Adelaide Southampton London Line, and its address. Interesting. It must be the place where they keep the records, including the one for the crew of the Rock of Gibraltar. I think that if you pretend you're from Scotland Yard, they'll give it to you without any problems. But I have another solution. I'll call in the specialist. Okay, so then brightly we had to generally go to the window to actually call Wiggins, could you come upstairs please? So if you like Wiggins. At your service, Mr. Holmes. I need a register, my young friend. If you could borrow it. There will be half a guinea for every one of you. I need the crew list of the Rock of Gibraltar in 1893 and their current employment. I'm straight on it, Mr. Holmes. Do you really think they'll find it, Holmes? My secret police is better than the Yard in many ways. Here it is, Mr. Holmes. But we can't take it back. It's too risky. Put it on the table. I'll take care of it. Good work, young Wiggins. Okay, so... Uh... This list shows the senior officers of the Rock of Gibraltar, on which Lady Brackenstall and her maid made their voyage. Lady Brackenstall does not know anyone in England. This must mean that someone on this list is our mysterious visitor. And these are the lists of the senior officers of the Adelaide Southampton London Line ships. Let us find out who was in London upon November the 7th. Okay. This officer is still at sea, therefore he cannot be involved. Okay. 
I do not think that this sailor has any connection to the case. I do not think that this sailor has any connection to the case. This officer was on a ship that sailed half a month ago. He wasn't in London at the time of the crime. Uh. This officer was on a ship that sailed half a month ago. He wasn't in London at the time of the crime. Mr. Jack Crocker was in London upon the date of the crime, and he is due to depart in two days. This officer is still at sea, therefore he cannot be involved. This officer is still at sea, therefore he cannot be involved. This officer is still at sea, therefore he cannot be involved. Captain Jack Crocker is our mysterious visitor. He was the only one around at the time of the murder. Okay, so let's just... Um so I think we now... We just basically this Crocker, do you think... It would be interesting to meet him. Our young friend should be able to find him. Wiggins, could you find a way to bring this Captain Crocker here to us? Here? Holmes, that could be dangerous. No problem, Mr. Holmes. Mr. Holmes? I was informed that you were looking for me, and I'd like to know why. Yes, it is important that we talk. You will soon understand why. You are acquainted with Lady Mary Brackenstall, are you not? Yes, I think I do remember her, from when I was first officer, but I still don't see... It seems your relationship went beyond that of mere passenger and first officer. How dare you! Indeed, how reckless a feeling is love, particularly if one is prepared to commit a murder in its name. Explain yourself this instant. You are aware that the murder made the headlines of the morning press. You read the newspaper report, but to your dismay, found it much fabricated. Once you learned that I wanted to see you, you came straight away. You needed to know what I had found. You? And what do you know? That evening, you were with Lady Brackenstall despite the danger. I'm not afraid, Mr. Holmes. Besides, all of this is just guesswork. You would be right, 
If there was no evidence. What then? Okay, so now this is... Lady Brackenstall was tied to a chair on the night of the murder. And it was you who tied her up. You call that evidence? Right, so I think with um, this, um, it's probably going to be the sailor's knots. Um. Yep. Yes, as she was tied with a sailor's knot. Your handiwork. So, it's a sailor who's done it. That proves nothing, Mr. Holmes. I'm not the only sailor in London right now. Your theory is flawed, anyway. On the night of the murder, I was aboard the shark. I was supervising the repair of a porthole. At night? It was an emergency. There was a leak. You can ask the ship's carpenter. He can confirm. I'm sure that he can. Perfect. In that case, we have nothing more to talk about. Good evening, gentlemen. Holmes, what should we do now? Would you like to check his alibi? No. There is no doubt that these men will testify in his favor, and there will be no way to check. So, what then? So, we must work with what we have. We have all the puzzle pieces. Now I understand why you dissected the bell rope. Okay, so... Deduction we can make now. Right. Okay, so this is where we now conclude dual conclusions because, as I said. The previous episode this was just a short case so um so basically Okay, uh, so...
Right, so we're going to go through the different conclusions because there are, uh, I have been one of the few actual trophies I'm following um, to get as I've been started from since so, um, then. Ladies, I know the full story. You are both guilty, are you not? Mr. Holmes, I can explain everything. No, madam, he's bluffing. It is no use. Your husband was a violent man, a cruel man. Your argument last night ended tragically, with him stumbling and falling, fatally striking his head upon the fireplace grate. However, your mise en scène to divert suspicion was unnecessary. You should have admitted the truth. The truth is often subjective, Mr. Holmes. Not to me. What will you tell Inspector Lestrade? He will find nothing, as he handed the case over to me. Farewell, ladies. Inspector, I'm afraid that the murderers have escaped us. What? Do you mean to tell me that you failed? Never thought I'd live to see the day. I mentioned the murderers, not the case. It is obvious that the crime was committed by three criminals who cannot be the Randalls. You really think so? You only need to find a gang of three thugs wandering around. I can trust you to do that. If they exist, I'll catch them. You'll find someone, I have no doubt of it. Goodbye, Inspector. I think it's kind of pretty obvious that in that instance that he um, he was trying to cover up the murder um, because of the domestic abuse and so um, which is you know kind of it wouldn't have been I don't know I don't know if it's something they would have actually done or not done back then uh, it's different to tell because I've, you know, although a, I've done family history for 30 years, I've never come across anything that mentions that sort of thing. But you never know. It is not for me to. So anyway, that is one of the incorrect conclusions. So that's. So I, I actually realised that, um, or discovered from my friend, because he, he kept saying, to me, oh, why does it take so long for this to um, actually, you know, upload this, what's it? And then it turns out he's actually been editing those bits out. So anyway, let's go back to the deductions to get the second incorrect conclusion. So... So So here's the next one. Randall's were guilty.
Well, Inspector, this case proved to be a simple one after all. You think it's the Randall gang, then? Yes. I'll put my men on it straight away. I'll leave that to you, Inspector. After all, you have handled this matter quite brilliantly. Oh, thank you, Mr. Holmes. I do appreciate it. <laughs> if he was so sure that it was the Randalls, why didn't he just arrest them in the get-go? Instead of calling us, you know, getting them to call us in. Um, anyway, so that's the second inconclusive. And so we're now going to go for... It should be... Let's just move my leg a bit because the lack of blood flow has stopped. Right, okay, so this should now be the actual conclusion we're about to do. Wiggins, could you ask Mr. Crocker to come here again, please? Right away. Why did you make me come here again, Mr. Holmes? It is over. I know that it was you who killed Sir Eustace Brackenstall. What? I know, because of the height at which the rope was cut. The knife used was a sea knife. The knots were sailors' knots, and not least, the sheer force that was put behind the killing blow. And because you are the only one who knows Lady Mary Brackenstall in London. And because you love her. It's true. It is time for you to tell us the whole truth. I admit that I loved Mary madly from the first day that I met her. But I never did come to visit her. For I believed that she was in a happy household. When I talked to her maid who told me everything, I was insane with rage. I was due to set sail for six months away. I wanted only to see her again. But it turned into a damnable nightmare when he barged in. He dared raise his hand to her. He! He was not even worthy of licking her boots. Oh, I regret nothing. I admit I killed the monster out of love for her. She will forgive me if she is able. Lady Brackenstall already forgave you. She said nothing. Mary! But that makes her an accomplice as well as her maid. It places her in danger yet again. Mr. Holmes! You would not have managed to protect her. Till I die, do you hear me? Here is a letter that sets everything clear and it is the one that should be disclosed to the police. I am the only culprit. Mary had nothing to do with it. Now it is time to end this.
and get to that triangle button quick enough. Oh, I did it. I did it. I did it. Oh, wow. You should have let me die. How can I live if Mary suffers? I am sorry, Captain Crocker, but there has been quite enough death in this case. Whew. Inspector, I give you Sir Eustace's killer. He tried his best to perform his own justice. Well, I'm not surprised. Yes, it was me. I confess. Here is a piece of evidence that can be used in court. Perfect. A case that went smoothly for once. <laughs> right, so that's the um, actual correct ending. Um, I just, wow, that, that was quite exciting actually. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, so, yes, that concludes this episode. Um, and um, what I'll do is let's just accept that decision. Uh, yes, um, so. So yes, thank you very much for watching. I that, I did actually enjoy um, this one. It's it, it was a bit it was a moral compass with this one because obviously what what um, Captain Crocker did, I you can understand. You can understand his motives for doing it, and um, you know just unfortunately it's in this in the world we're in or we live in you still you know justice still has to be done no matter what and um i think you know if i was not doing this because i've been continuously trying to get the pacific actual uh trophy for um the, you know they're all criminals whatever the situation i would have um more than likely has said gone with the first option and said that you know left it to him to find the killers um, but obviously because I was doing the trophy um, so if I play I mean certainly if I play this through again I can assure you that my my decision would have been for somebody else to do it you know he'd leave him to find the actual killers and um, because I think he really believed it was the Randalls anyway, and he would have to find ultimately the proof of that to prove it. So, um, so yes. So thank you very much for watching. I certainly hope you enjoyed this one, and we will be starting the next case. Um, hopefully in in the next day or so. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your weekend if it's not already ended and happy gaming one and all and may the force be with you <laughs>